All right. So the way that I'm going to go ahead and run this is I'm going to have my little spiel here. I'm going to talk about the things I need to talk about, and then I'm going to hand it over to Coach, and he's going to have a few things that he uh, wants to talk about as well, um, and then we'll take questions. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, I am Mr. Moody, uh, obviously athletic director. I also teach BIT at the school. Um, I'm uh, glad that you all can show up today, be here. Uh, I actually enjoy doing meetings like this. I know a lot of people don't, but this is kind of what I would actually <laughs> prefer, uh, just kind of how I, I do things. Um, and once again, for those that didn't hear, I am recording. Uh, I'm going to throw this up on YouTube for people that can't see it or anybody that just wants to rewatch afterwards. So that's kind of how we're going to do that. So um, the first thing I'm going to start with is I'm going to talk about the concussion protocol. Um, as many of you are aware, we are constantly learning about the causes and effects surrounding concussions. It is ever changing and athletics all over are constantly adapting with the new information we receive. Uh, with that said, we are not going to impact tests like we have done in the past. Uh, many area doctors are not using the test results and it seemed like the test had too much variance anyways. Uh, we were having kids that had concussions. They were taking their test results and going to doctors and just they weren't using them at all. So we just decided that we're not going to use it. Instead, my point person for everything is going to be our corporation nurse, Brooke Wagner. Uh, she has a lot of experience actually with uh, sports medicine. Um, and so for any concussion issues and really any, any injury issues at all, um, I'm going to kind of defer to her. Um, so if any athlete exhibits concussion-like symptoms, they're going to be removed from the contest. Uh, coaches will con and coaches will contact me and I'll contact Brooke. Um, our coaches have had training in identifying and handling concussions, so your athletes are in good hands. Um, the athletes will then be directed to Mrs. Wagner. Like I said, she's going to handle everything. I am not going to let them participate again until I get clearance from uh, Brooke Wagner. So she's going to obviously contact all of you, handle things like that, and then she's going to give me the clearance for them to practice, participate in games, and things like that. So that's kind of how we're going to handle the process. And that's all just for the protection of the kids. Like I said, uh, concussions are kind of a, they're a, a newer, there's a lot of newer science with concussions. Um, there's a lot of things out there. So we're just definitely going to err on the side of, of uh, caution when it comes to concussions. So uh, when we talk grades, um, at Yorktown, we expect our athletes to be students first. Um, I personally do all the grade checks for the athletes at the quarter and at the midterm. Uh, and if any athlete has an F grade, they are immediately ineligible for athletics. This means that they are not allowed to participate in any contests and may not travel with the team, but we do let them practice. Uh, we think it's really good for the athletes to continue to be around the team because it gives them something to be motivated to uh, get their grades up. So. We let them practice, but uh, no, no contests, no traveling. Um, I will then recheck the grades in uh, two weeks to determine if the athletes can regain eligibility. Uh, to maintain the integrity of the grade checks, I do not allow the kids to immediately fix their grade if they are ineligible at the quarter of the midterm. Sometimes what we have is kids find out they're ineligible and then they turn in 17 assignments to the same teacher and let them grade it tomorrow. And it's just not, it's not feasible. I'm not going to do that to the teachers, for one. Um, and, and two, we just don't – we want the kids to, to care about their grade and not just slip by at the midterm and at the quarter. Uh, they should be on top of those things. They should be checking power school. They should be talking to teachers. They should handle that before midterm or quarter ever gets there. So um, we're definitely going to make sure that uh, – they're taking the grade seriously. And if they are ineligible, they will be ineligible for two weeks. Uh, I will recheck after those two weeks. If they are then eligible, they can head back to the team. They can rejoin, go to contests, uh, travel with the team. If they are not eligible, then it's two more weeks and I'll recheck after those two weeks. Oftentimes that means they're done because sometimes, most of the time the quarter midterm lands where there's not much season left. So in some cases, it, they've been able to come back after the second one, but most sports, that's not, that hasn't been working for anybody. So um, when it comes to playing time, uh, especially with this team here, Coach Harrelson has kept quite a few kids. Um, and it, it's a good thing that he's kept a lot of them. Obviously, we have uh, some sixth graders that are 
that are joining, that are with the team. Uh, they get to see some of these eighth graders uh, really become leaders, uh, lead the team, and it, it should be a really good learning experience for them. Um, I also know that Coach Harrelson is great at getting kids into games. So um, will some of the sixth graders have as much playing time as eighth graders? I don't anticipate that. Um, and, and neither should any of, any of you really. I mean, if, if, they're, they're, if they're the good player and they're supposed to get it, they will. Uh, but I always defer to Coach Harrelson on that. He's the one that's at every practice. He knows the kids. He knows what they're capable of doing. And uh, I trust him with all of that. Um, if you ever have any like – if, if there's ever any question about playing time, what we like to have happen is we like for the kids to be the one to advocate for that the kids should go talk to Coach Harrelson and have those conversations. Um, it's, it's great for them to be able to advocate for themselves. They should be doing that in the classroom as well. It shouldn't be something where it's awkward for them to do that in athletics. So we like for that to happen. Um, obviously, if any of you have any questions, you can talk to Coach Harrelson. You can talk to myself. That's never an issue. But especially with questions about playing time, we want the kids to go ask those things because they need to hear the answers. Uh, Coach Harrelson will be very upfront with them and tell them these are the reasons why there is not as much playing time for you as you would hope for. These are the things you need to work on. And the kids need to hear those things. Uh, so that's kind of where I stand on that. Um, hopefully those conversations will happen. So um, when we talk conduct, we stressed our athletes that when they put on their uniforms, they are representing your town. They should take pride in that and be exemplary competitors as well as show great sportsmanship. The hope is that our adults can help model this behavior. So please remember that our kids are always trying their best. The goal of the fans should always be to cheer on all kids who are competing. Uh, in the same vein, please remember that all officials are community members who are deeply invested <laughs> in the growth of your children. We do pay them, but it isn't a ridiculous amount. Uh, they are officiating because they love the game, they enjoy it, and they should be treated with respect. I don't anticipate having to deal with any issues like that, but I like to point those things out because your kids are looking to you for those model behaviors. They do notice when people yell at the refs. Um, I have, I can't even count how many times I've seen where refs are berated by fans and it happens at middle school games. They're berated by fans and then you automatically see the demeanor of the kids playing change. They start to complain about the refs as well. And it's just not the way, it's just not the way it should happen. Um, a lot of coaches talk about how we don't let the refs control the game. Um, it just kind of, it's just, we don't like to see that happening. Uh, so we want to model that behavior. Not that I anticipate anything bad happening, but I always like to bring that up. So uh, next we have COVID changes. So obviously there's some changes this year due to the circumstances, this meeting being one of them. Uh, first, we have guidelines in place from the DOE that are expected to be followed. Things such as masks and sanitizer rules are there to protect the, kid, the athletes and coaches and must be followed. Um, the reopening guidelines that a lot of you saw over the summer are not from myself or uh, Paul Heidenreich at the high school. Those are not things that we came up with. They are things we received from the Department of Education. So there are reopening guidelines that are really out of our hands, honestly. Um, so we, we really got to follow those. We really have to pay attention to them. Um, they're there for a reason. Your athletic department coaches have many new procedures in place as well that they may not even be aware of. We need to help to encourage and model these guidelines. Um, really, if you look at the things that are happening in our area right now with the Delta football team, uh, all of them meet, having to quarantine for two weeks, the things like putting on hand sanitizer before practice and after practice could be the difference between our team quarantining for two weeks and play or playing every game. So just those small things are really, really important at this, at this point. Uh, be sure that your athlete always has water at events and practices. We are not allowed to provide these things uh, as we have been able to in the past to keep from cross contaminating between our athletes. So make sure they always have those water bottles. Um, they have the ability to fill them at school. Uh, but make sure they always are bringing them because if they go out there without water, that's just awful. It's just not a good, not a good scenario. And we can't provide them with anything. Uh, we will have many procedures set in place for tracing purposes this year as well, such as bus seating charts and different group practice guidelines. Many of you won't see those, but please continue to encourage your athletes to adhere to these guidelines. 
So we will be doing bus seating charts. Uh, we'll have conduct on the buses that's expected, uh, such as wearing a mask the whole time, which means that we can't have any eating like we used to be able to in the past. Uh, kids are gonna have to face forward. We can't let them turn around and talk to each other for obvious reasons. Um, and we are doing the seating charts so we can do some tracing. So if Johnny happens to test positive, we have his contact directly related to just some of the people that are closest to him. And we might be able to continue on with the season if, you know, other things happen. There are, there are teams in this area that have done the tracing properly and they have not had to quarantine their entire team because of it. So we're doing those things to just as a safeguard. Obviously, it's just best practice in what we're doing right now anyways. So uh, fans, I'm going to go over fans and attendance because some of you might want to go to football games or volleyball games this year. We're doing a voucher uh, program for those games where we are handing out vouchers beforehand, and you cannot purchase a ticket to football or volleyball games unless you have a voucher. We are not doing that for soccer. Uh, we are only supposed to have 250 people per venue, which includes the players, officials, and everything. We're not going to reach that number with soccer. But even if we come close to it, we have so much room to actually socially distance that we should be okay. Um, I'm going to allow people to sit um, on behind the goals. Obviously, they need to be a little farther from the field than normal. But I'm going to allow people to sit not only on the one side, but also behind the goals a little bit uh, just to make sure – we can socially distance. I'd prefer people not sit there, but if it gets too crowded on the one sideline, um, we might have to, and that's just something that we can do. So uh, we're gonna obviously practice social distancing at games. We're also going to require masks. Um, even though it's outside, your players, when they are on benches, when they are not playing, they're, they're to be wearing masks. So that's one of the things, the guidelines that the DOE sent down, and we're gonna definitely enforce that. So. We, we want everybody, we need everybody wearing masks at the contests, um, even if you are being socially distant. Um, concessions, there was a plan to have concessions at our home events. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to go. Uh, I would anticipate not having concessions and then being pleasantly surprised if we do. So all, bring food if you need to, obviously bring water to these events if you're going to watch. Um, you're, you're never going to be turned away if you have a big jug of water or a, a pop or whatever you want to have. So um, seating, once again, doesn't really affect this because we're going to be sitting away from each other and there's not a seating guideline. But at other events, we will have bleachers marked with X's and it'll be one person per X. Uh, that's kind of what we're looking at at the moment. And like I said, at all the venues, we're going to be wearing masks. So they're going to be required. Um, that is all that I have uh, right now. So, Coach Harrelson, if you want to take over. And... Thanks a lot, Mr. Moody. Uh, welcome, parents. Thank you for coming out tonight. Um, I don't have too much to add. I, I, I've met a lot of you in the past, and a lot of you know me. You've had you, either the same kid has played for me, uh, or in many cases, you've had older brothers, older sisters play for me. Um, for the rest of you, welcome to Yorktown Soccer. Uh, Yorktown Middle School Soccer. This is our third season and it's been it's been two great seasons so far. These kids really have a blast. Uh, I really enjoy it. My assistant coach Dane Patton uh, really enjoys it and all the kids really have and I'm very confident that we're going to have a great time that your kids are going to learn a lot and that they're going to have a meaningful experience uh, so much as the circumstances allow us to continue. Um, uh, so first of all, let me tell you about the assistant coach, Dane Patton. I did not give him the, the Zoom information tonight because I don't want to bother him. Dane is 21 years old. Uh, he's been coaching with us for three years now. He actually, uh, coming out of high school, out of Yorktown High School, uh, he started uh, this program with me as, as the assistant coach. Uh, he's very devoted to the kids. He understands your kids. Uh, he's the sweetest young man you'd ever want to meet. Uh, he's somebody who has your kid's best interest. Not that Mr. Moody and I don't, but he's closer to them. He's only like seven years uh, out of being a Yorktown Middle School student himself. Um, and he's there all the time. So, you know, you be very thankful uh, that you have Dane. I know I am. Uh, Dane and I decided to keep a big team this year for a variety of reasons. We have 28 kids. Mr. Moody alluded to it, though he didn't give you that number. Uh, there are a number of reasons for that. First of all, uh, I'd rather keep a kid than cut a kid. 
Uh, so, you know, sending people home is not, it's, it's my least favorite time, time of, every, uh, of every soccer season. Uh, but more importantly than that, it gives us the opportunity to coach more kids and to teach them. And I think Dane has developed as a coach enough in the past two years that he and I can split the practice in some cases. And I think we're capable of teaching 28 kids at a time. Uh, thirdly, um, this is an, a very eighth grade heavy team. Um, I think there are about 16 eighth graders. Uh, and so we didn't want to have too few sixth and seventh graders because we need a basis to have a Yorktown middle school soccer team uh, in the next two years. Um, one result of all that, however, uh, is that we won't be able to get every kid in every game. Uh, Mr. Moody complimented me in regard to this because it, it is something that I try to do. I, I, I have tried to play every kid in every game for the first two years. Uh, there are a couple of, of exceptions to that, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but for the most part, we've done that. Every kid has played every game. That's not really an option this year with 28 kids. The games are 60 minutes long. Uh, it goes by very quickly. There's a lot of things happening in a soccer game when a half is 30 minutes. Uh, it's typically not recommended that you take a kid out in less than about 12 to 14 minutes. I mean, that's like what out of the professional soccer coaches, they, they, they tell us never to, never to take a kid out in less time than that. Um, so you can only rotate them so quickly. You can only rotate so many at a time. Uh, so, uh, we kept some kids who might not see a lot of game time thinking that keeping them on the team, letting them be a part of the team, and then maybe carry the torch forward in the next couple of years would be better for them and better for the team overall. Uh, so, you know, we'll deal with that. I mean, it, it might be that some kids get a little discouraged by that, uh, as the season goes on. Um, but we'll deal with those sorts of things. As, um, Mr. Moody said, I prefer that the kids talk to me rather than the parents talk to me. Uh, you're welcome to talk to me uh, at any time about anything. I answer very quickly my phone and my email, uh, both of which, by the way, I put in the chat box. Uh, if you don't already have that information, um, I mean, uh, I almost always answer. Um, let me tell you a little bit about my values and what I want to get, get out of this. First of all, this is middle school soccer. Uh, I don't care how many games we win. Uh, I say this now when we're actually playing the games, I do try to win them, of course. I mean, I, I I'm into competitive sports uh, and like, like the kids and like everybody else, we wanna win when the game starts. And more importantly, you have to respect the game. And if you're not playing it to win, you're not playing the game, you're not being fair to the other team. Uh, however, I don't think anybody remembers uh, who won the middle school, the, the middle school soccer uh, games two, three, four years ago. Some of the kids probably do, but you and I don't. Um, with that being said, I think we'll win most of our games. And in the past two years, I believe we have. I mean, I think we, we lost one game two years ago to Burris. Uh, and last year, the kids had to tell me today we tied Pendleton. I thought we had beaten Pendleton. Sam Hanna scored a goal from 30 yards in the last second. And I thought that won the game for us. But it did, apparently, they tell me it, uh, it tied the game for us. Uh, in any case, we're not worried about that. There's no county championship. There's no trophies. Uh, there's nothing to win. Uh, I will measure the from the success of this team um, from a sporting aspect. You know, there are other aspects, but from a sporting aspect, I, I measure the success of this team and this program by how well the kids play in the high school. Uh, and when we started the middle school soccer program, uh, one thing we wanted to do was give more access to more kids in the county. And I worked with the other schools also, and we now have uh, six schools in the county, have six middle schools have teams, maybe five. Uh, it's all but one or two middle schools that don't have teams. Um, so we, we increased access, uh, but we also wanted to increase the skill development and we're trying to make um, the high school soccer in the area better and I keep track of the kids as they play for the high school uh, and I look at that as the outcome more than as winning the games. Um, nonetheless, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna try to win the games. Um, this playing time issue, okay, so uh, there will be some games in all likelihood uh, that we win by a lot and those, are games, those games will feature a lot of rotation in and out, uh, and we'll try to get everybody uh, actual competitive game time in a few of those cases. Uh, I can't say I know for sure, but uh, just from past experience, and we know that a, a few of the middle schools haven't, been, haven't had programs for very long, and they don't have as many kids in that area uh, who play travel soccer as Yorktown does. Um, so we'll probably have some opportunities there. Um, usually when we play Burris, 
uh, we play whatever you want to call it, a third half, a fifth quarter. Uh, and that's where the kids who didn't get a lot of game time and the rest of it play against the Burris kids who didn't get a lot of game time. The reason why Burris does that is that Burris doesn't cut. They have some type of rule against that in the middle school. Um, uh, your kids will tell you uh, that, you know, there's three or four things that I always tell them. Uh, I tell them we work on their weaknesses. Um, you know, I tell them that we try to do everything right and we don't worry about the outcome now. Uh, so, uh, you know, those are the things I try to teach them. I try to, I, I'm a philosophy teacher, uh, in my day job, you know, uh, middle school soccer coach is my second job. My first job is philosophy teacher at Ball State. Uh, I do bring a few of those aspects. Uh, I do worry about the personal growth and, and, and the life lessons that students get out of this and uh, the skill development lessons, I think coincide with those very nicely. I, you know, I tell them, be mindful of your weaknesses, work on your weaknesses. Uh, I tell them, try to do a thing right and don't worry about the result. Uh, under, accept the fact that the result will come in the long run. You know, and I start that from the very first day. You know, kids come to the sixth grade and, you know, they, they play soccer with one foot. And I say, now you got to play with the other foot. They say, I can't kick with the other foot. And I say, yeah, one day you will. Uh, and it will be more rewarding three years down the line when you score a goal with your left foot uh, against, you know, Pendleton High School. Uh, and you'll forget the, the 144 flubs that you had on the middle school practice field. So we, we work on these things every day and you know, the kids really enjoy it. And in, in the two years I've been here, uh, the kids have, have really come together. We have a lot of kids on this team who are in the eighth grade, who are also on the team in the sixth grade. Uh, they will be leaders of the team, but I think, uh, and I can say very confidently, um, especially you know, with the eighth grade girls who Val Frost, who's with us, uh, was the coach of as they grew up. Uh, they're, they're a very team oriented, very friendly group of people who I think will be the leaders. I won't have to work very hard to incorporate the other people. I mean, we, we play games, we give everybody nicknames. Uh, they come up with cheers and chants and uh, we have a lot of fun. Uh, and you know, that group of kids, I think, uh, will, will lead that, but we're also going to welcome, you know, the sixth and seventh graders, uh, you know, the new kids, some of our, some of our, uh, most successful players last year were kids who were new to the school district. Um, that might be the case again this year. Um, you know, so while we do have a core group that have continued, it's not, it's, it's not a cliquish group that, that others, uh, won't be able to join. Um, I don't know what's happening. I mean, I, I, I teach at a university. Uh, I begin teaching in eight days. I have no idea, nine days. I have no idea what's gonna happen. I'm gonna walk into a classroom that's gonna have uh, some type of plastic shield dividing me from the students and I'm gonna be wearing a mask. Uh, and in some of my classrooms, I can only have half the, half the kids attend per session, but I have to somehow devise a plan for that and send emails to these people in advance saying you can't come Tuesday, but you can come Thursday. Um, I tell you that not because it's that interesting you, to you, but say, I have no idea what I'm doing with this COVID stuff. Uh, the same is true for soccer. Um, I, I really don't know how it's going to work with, uh, with the traveling. How many kids are we going to be able to get on the bus? Uh, is everybody going to be able to play the away game at, you know, at Selma, since we should have an away game at Selma Middle School this year? Um, you know, I, I don't have the answers to that. Mr. Moody might have some, a better sense of the answers than I do, but but he probably doesn't have the complete answers. Um, I, I, so I bust in a little bit. There, there have been some changes. I haven't heard anything about soccer yet. Um, for instance, we do have an away cross country meet where we've been, we were told today uh, we could only bring 10 boys, 10 girls. So, yeah, right. you know, it's other schools, there, we're basically all making our own rules as we go with the little guidance we have from DOE. So um, our voucher program that we run here at Yorktown, uh, for instance, Shelbyville is, is not doing that. They are first come, first serve, uh, show up. They're not even really counting numbers. They're just letting people, they're, they're like blocking off their bleachers and everybody can just sit wherever they want, just spread out. Scary to me, but that's what they're doing. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's kind of up in the air what other schools uh, will do and, and, when they tell me, I'll tell you kind of yeah. thing. So Yeah, no, it's, I mean, so there, there are going to be some adjustments um, as the season goes on, and we're just going to have to trust the, trust the school board, trust the school administration to pass down the right information, and, and we're going to follow what they do. Uh, 
I'm just a, a, a part-time soccer coach at Yorktown Middle School. I don't try to make decisions over there. I'm just going along with it. Um, I, I have enough stuff over at the university where I try to get my voice heard. And uh, I'm not trying to do that at Yorktown. Uh, so we're just going to do what we do. Uh, as far as the parents are concerned and, and the things that the parents typically organize, we might be a little constrained as far as that goes. Uh, I don't know how. Like, so normally I watch the kids for two hours in the cafeteria between dismissal and uh, uh, a game. Um, are we able to, uh, what do we do? What do we do for that? Usually parents have organized snack deliveries for the kids. I'm not sure that that can happen. It can, um, it, can it can as long as they are individually packaged. So Ooh, okay. we can do those things, uh, but they have to be individually packaged. Um, they like they say pre-packaged but we can sell hot dogs at events as long as we cook them beforehand and wrap them in foil so okay. all right yeah so the, the parents may organize all the things they've organized in the past which is yes. like locker decorations you'll have, a, you'll have a space that you can have after yeah. um after school um okay that that won't change you can still be in the cafeteria there might be some clorox wipes that are used before and after this time but mm -hmm. that's about the only difference so yeah and I used to I used to bring a book and read a book and let the kids run around and play, uh, and probably I'm going to have to make them be six feet apart this time. Yeah, they're going to have to chill out. <laughs> Some of your kids actually also sit down near me and read a book. I'm not going to tell you which ones uh, because I'm not I'm not I'm not ratting the kids out. <laughs> so and many of them do their homework in that time. That's probably what they're going to do this year. Uh, so. What I will do is once I have everybody's email address and, and throughout the, the course of today, I've been getting contacts from those parents whose addresses I did not have this morning. Um, so thank you for all of you who, uh, you know, sent a text to a friend and said that, you know, they needed to get on, the, on our email list. Uh, once I have everybody's email, uh, I am going to send around uh, a parent email saying these are the things you may organize if you wish. Before we had practice jerseys, there were snack deliveries, there are drinks for games, uh, there were locker decorations. I'm not saying you have to do all that. Those are parent initiatives. Uh, if you guys are too overwhelmed, some of you are homeschooling, some of you are, uh, have also complications from uh, whatever, whatever your day jobs are. Uh, if you don't wanna do any of that stuff this year, it's perfectly okay, uh, but I will initiate the conversation so that we find out if those things will happen. Otherwise, um, I don't have much more to say. Uh, I'm really, I'm, I'm very impressed with this group of kids. It's been a really pleasant four or five practices that we've had. Uh, you know, the kids, the kids are laughing. They're, they appreciate the opportunity to be outside, to be running around and playing a game with each other, uh, rather than you know being locked in a room looking at you know, a math lesson on their phone or whatever they were doing for the past five months. So. Uh, I think we have time probably for, for questions or comments from the parents. Yeah, if anybody has any questions. Hi, Kyler. <laughs> we have a schedule yet? Uh, actually, yes. Um, I can screen share right now if, uh, if you would like. Um, it is actually on YorktownAthletics.com. Um, Let me screen share here. Okay, so this is what we have. Um, it's not robust. Uh, we did add yeah, a game excellent. against Daleville. So we've got that here. That's new. Um, it's awesome. something that we're in the process of building. Uh, obviously, we play Delta twice. We play Burris twice. Um, the problem that we run into is we a lot of teams um, that are in our conference are split, and they don't really want to play a co-ed team. Mm -hmm. um, but we haven't – this year would have been a year that we would have probably split until COVID happened. So the, the talks were in about, you know, having a girl and a boy team. Uh, but then, obviously, everything yeah. happened, and that's kind of been put on hold. So this is, this is what we have. It's a, it's a decent schedule, especially yeah, for the area. That. A lot of the teams on here um, that are co-ed don't have a schedule this large. So, Yeah. So let me make w one more point, because I said that there would be, when I, when I talked about the winning thing <laughs> and the substitution thing, um, you know, e each of the past two years, we had a real rival 
uh, and the kids will know this. I mean, I, a lot of the kids who play soccer, they know who the good soccer players at the other schools are. Two years ago, it was Burris. Last year, it was Northside. Um, I don't know. I think it won't be Burris this year. It's more like it could be Northside. It could be Delta. But there's a chance that one of these teams is uh, as Pendleton good as will be we good. are. Or what's that? Oh, yeah, Pendleton. Yeah, Pendleton. Besides Pendleton, yeah. Pendleton absolutely will be good. Yeah. Um, depending on what they sent two years ago, they played their girls team, which we beat last year. They sent a co-ed team because they have both, right? Uh, but uh, Pendleton's good. If one of the county schools is good, we might take a slightly different approach to playing them because the kids really get up for it. Really, I mean, not, not because I care so much. Like I told you, I forgot that we had tied the game and not won it last year. Um, but, uh, you know, the kids, the kids will take these in-county rivalries if they develop very seriously. And, you know, we'll, we'll take an appropriate approach of that if it happens. Yeah. I think probably not, though. I think we would probably beat Delta, Burris, uh, and Northside all. And, and this knows. is not, this is actually still kind of a working document. Um, we are adding games and, and, and changing things around almost daily at this point. Uh, Northside's moved a lot of stuff back. Didn't have to do it for soccer, but other sports, they've moved back. Um, like I said, Daleville was added very recently. So um, this could change a little bit. And if it does, I will obviously contact all of you, send it out uh, on Twitter. If you don't follow me on Twitter, you probably should. Uh, <laughs> athletics it's like a little plug there right hey follow me <laughs> nice like button, right? no uh, follow me because i put up updates like instantly on twitter when i have them so okay cool i hate twitter like so, I absolutely despise it but i have to use it so what happened to uh selma did someone not get a team together? that's the one i was looking at that that's not on here i need to talk to uh selma's ad um I think they might have been like a one-year kind of contract, and I need to go look at that. So mm -hmm. that will probably be added. He probably yeah. has it, um, and I don't. So that'll they be have a, that's on there for sure. They, they, you they, know something else missing? No, that's it. Uh, yeah. Now, Selma played at our place this year, last yeah. year, and they brought like 25 or 30 kids. Yeah. So that's why I'm surprised to not see them because they I certainly think, had that for the kids – I don't know that they played any home games either. So that might be a yeah. home game again. I don't know. But I'll, yeah. I'm going to probably contact him. I'll probably send him an email after this is over and, and see what, what I'm missing there. So I, I know the coach of Selma, and he, he planned to play, so he should be there. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll contact him. That'll, that'll be changed for sure. So. And Delta should be good. They got uh... – Free quarter of Matty's team uh, of DCFC who's going to join the Delta team this year. Yeah, I realize that a lot of those, a lot of the kids from uh, from that team that uh, Matisse and and uh, we we have three or four of those kids also now with Colin yeah. Furnish and Zuko and uh, but yeah, I know a lot of those kids go to Delta. So it would be fun. Yes, very good. Does anyone else have anything they want to ask? Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Okay, I was wondering just because I know the high school just sent something out about um, they have to have vouchers for the parents to be able to get into the game. Is that how the middle school is going to work as well? Um, only for football and volleyball uh, at the moment. Um, when we went through ticket sales and everything and, and put all the numbers together, um, I think soccer's highest last year was like a hundred and it was like 150, I believe. Um, so it didn't even approach the 250 number. So we're not, we're just going to be like, Hey, everybody needs to socially distance. Um, just do that make sure we're kind of spread apart. And we're doing masks, but other than that, yeah, it won't affect soccer. So. Great news. Yeah. Yeah. It affects everything else. It seems like so. Soccer and cross country are good. We can't really control the, the park. So, any other questions? All right. Well, um, I appreciate all of you. Um, oh, did I hear somebody? Yeah. Where Where are the games? Oh, uh, we actually play behind the middle school now. Um, that was something we changed last year. Uh, we used to play over at the. Uh, the Y or whatever in Yorktown, we play behind the middle school. Super awesome venue. I'm so glad that we're able it's, to do that. It's a great field. 
It really is. It's nice. It looks nice. It's nice to sit out there. Uh, it's definitely one of my better supervisions when it comes to sports. So I, I enjoy going out there and watching a game. So. Okay, All right. Well, uh, like I said, I have recorded this, so I um, will be putting this up on YouTube. I'm going to probably do this over the weekend um, so you can go and watch it. I'll tweet out where the link is on YouTube so you can see it. Um, and other than that, thank you all for showing up, and uh, I'll see you all out at the soccer fields.